Okay, guys. This is Nokia 7.2 phone, a good mid-range phone. I bought it for my father, so yeah. This is the retail box, Indian unit. As you can see, uh, this is the model, but we have the charcoal eyes. I would have loved the green variant, but this is fine. You can find the specifications here. Nothing on the side, nothing on the bottom. Here is Nokia 7.2 branding, but the font style he used here is unlike Nokia. This is somewhat weird. All right, here's some value here, barcode and cell values. Okay, let's get into it immediately. So, building of this box. So, here we have your SIM ejector pin. I have already unboxed it. So, here's your SIM ejector pin. And this cutout represents the camera layout of the phone powered by Zeiss Optics. So, here it is the much awaited phone. In fact, I would say this is the best phone under 20,000 rupees besides Moto One Fusion. Try to get Moto One Fusion. If you cannot get the hands on that phone, the next best choice is this one Moto One Fusion or Nokia 7.2. And let's see what else we have here. I think this one has charger brick yes charger brick is here yeah no branding whatsoever just a plain black charger reminiscent of old Nokia but there's no Nokia branding here 10 watt charger no fast charging on this phone shame on that and this one is a very very mediocre inferior earbuds Nokia HMD Global Nokia is destined to ruin everybody see th these ear tips are very very mediocre there is no airlocks here there is no cushion here very much inferior mediocre ear tips And finally we have USB 2.0 to type C. So it will be nice they would have provided if they had provided USB 3.0 to type C, but anyway, since there is no quick charge, USB 2.0 to type C. At least they have given type C. We gonna settle with that. Alright guys, let me peel this wrapper off. A moment of silence to the plastic. Let me just okay. This is the phone here. Yeah, charcoal eyes. Let me boot this up and come back to you and let's check out this Zeiss optics lens. This reminds me of Micromax U Euphoria and now the present Huawei Mi 40 Pro. Alright, let's boot up. I don't know why but most YouTubers don't show the booting menu booting of the phone but I would like to see the booting of the phone it takes some while to boot up for the first time that's for sure it says Android 1 no shaking hands this time Nokia at least the sound is bad All right let me let me actually set 
things up and I'll be right back. Alrighty. Alrighty guys, before the setting setup process is finished, Nokia asked me to install an update of 1.8 GB. So I I thought I would I'll, uh, show you Android 9.0 OS, but it seems it will be powering Android 10 at least. All right, after the update. Boom, over and out. Okay guys, let's talk build quality here. There is a dedicated Google Assistant button here. The phone is overall plastic, but there is a nice matte finish to this charcoal ice variant. Fingerprints are not much, but it's still there. I would have preferred a glass finish, at least for this price. Nokia should have done that. The buttons are nice clicky. Let's talk about the cameras here. The primary is a 48 megapixel f1.8 aperture lens. And a secondary 8 megapixel f2.2 aperture lens. That's unfortunate. It would have been nice if Nokia had included f2.0 lens. But instead, Nokia has gone with a 2.2 aperture camera, ultra wide. Another 5 megapixel f2.4 depth sensor. That's a useless sensor. That's a really useless sensor. But, but, not in this phone. Not in this phone. This depth sensor works hand in hand with Zeiss Optics technology to provide you with the perfect bokeh effect. And here is your regular trustworthy fingerprint sensor. The phone is 180 grams, pretty pretty heavy but manageable. Full HD plus display with 20 megapixel front side camera, selfie shooter. USB type C on the bottom. Headphone jack, nice to see you here. On the top, headphone jack is there. USB Type C with USB on the go, and yeah, that's neat. Single bo bottom firing speakers, that's unfortunate. No stereo speakers here, and a notch on the top. A teardrop notch on the top. Alright, these phones feels good in the hand. There is a Nokia branding in the front side of the phone, which is not cool. Nokia, definitely not cool. Alright. Back in a moment after the setup process is finished. Okay folks, let's see here. All right, Nokia 7.2. Fingerprint sensor is quite sloppy, but it works. The default launcher is not good. There's gesture controls instead of navigation. Uh, the funny part is, there is no three finger navigation in this phone. You have to adjust for the gesture control or another gesture control. Yes. There is no three finger navigation. That's a bummer here. There is a no there's no way to hide the notch, which is annoying. Runs on Android 10, which is why it's in dark mode. Uh, swipe down from the fingerprint sensor will reveal your notification. See, that works, vice versa. So it's in May security patch, which is bad considering this is October and early November is going to hit. Nokia is doing bad. All right, um, camera samples is pretty decent. 
if I'm able to, I will attach it. First, I have to deal with this crappy launcher here. So, it's nice. Dark mode is sweet, but everything else is crappy. Alright. Full HD display. The phone is sleek in the hand, but, you know, good cameras. But the launcher is very much crappy, you have to change it. It comes with Google Keyboard, so no problems with that. Build quality is top notch, but lacks the military grade certification found in the LG phones. All right. Gee, let me actually. Go into. All right. Dark mode is not completely black, it's dark, which is annoying again. Alright. About phone. Too much about phone information here. Android version 10. As you can see, Android version 10. Security patch May 5th, 2020. All right. All right. Let me just dig into some few more things here and there. After using this phone for a month, I will tell you the full review of this mid-range Nokia offering. Thank you for watching.